Try, try to keep us timeless. What because we're, we're not going to run this until after you die. That's what it is. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> I think Are we ready? <laughs> Five, four, three, two, and one. Uh, 14 years with the Chicago Bears, uh, two or three of those with a helmet. It's a pleasure to welcome my leather, by the buddy, way. Leather. Uh, number 55, Doug Buffon. Game time, long ball time, daily copy time, broadcasting from the place for stakes, Carmichael, right here at 1052 West Monroe Street. All right, uh, I'm going to be gentle to open up. Uh huh. One game, winner take all. Who would you rather have at middle linebacker in his prime? Dick Butkus. Your roommate or Brian Irwin? No question, Dick Buckers. Why are, you, why are you looking at me like I, I, I lied? <laughs> I'm going to take Dick Buckers. I mean, I, yeah, I played with the guy, I, not to mention Brad, Brian Irwin is a hell of a linebacker. I mean, there's no question he's a Hall of Famer. But I'm taking one guy, and I'm taking one guy that I would play with, and that would be uh, Dick Buckus. And trust me, you know, what I saw Brian, especially this year, how he's playing, I mean, there's no question what he is. He is a Hall of Famer, not even a doubt in my mind. But when you tell me, you know, who you're going to take, I'm going to go with Dick Butkus. Would you buy my pitch that uh, inch for inch, pound for pound, Dick Butkus may well be the greatest football player in NFL history? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, people are saying, well, how could that be? He's a, he's a middle linebacker. The guy took no prisoners. I mean, the guy was, and then he, not only did he do it, uh, you know, in the games, but he also did it in practice. Everybody talks about leadership. You hear this all the time? This yeah. guy's the leader, this guy's the leader, he's not a leader, that guy's a leader. He was a leader, but how he was a leader was how he performed. Not only when he's out on the field, but during practice sessions. Practice sessions was World War III. I mean, he took no prisoners in practice. And so when you start, that's, that rubs off on everybody else. And I told you, I used to line up on that outside linebacking position, and I'd look into the middle, and I'd always see a little blood trickling down his face. And I say to myself, thank God he's on my side. That's all I would say. And that's exactly how I looked at it. And that's how I felt. I really, really loved playing with the guy. The guy was unbelievable. All right, uh, speaking of leadership, recently Jay Cutler stands before the uh, Penn and Mike Club up in Lake Forest. Yeah. And somebody poses the question, can you last 16 ball games? Here is where a Johnny Unitas, a Bart Starr, a Joe Namath, any of your great quarterbacks would have said, absolutely. What does Cutler say? I don't know. That ain't leadership. Well, that ain't the kind of guy who's going to rally an offense. Chet, that's called the truth. <laughs> an old friend of mine, Mike North, and a lot of things that used to come out of his mouth, they say, how could he say that? They go, it was the truth. And people don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear what you just said. I'm guts me, bought there. I'll be out there. Don't worry. They can't hurt me. That's not the truth. I will guarantee you he'll be in a body bag if he plays again <laughs> like he did last week. I mean, I'm not stupid. And so when you just said what you just said was stupid. Because the fact is, he's telling you the truth. He's telling you, I don't know. You can't take that type of beating. And the next guy in line is Forte. He'll be the next one to get ba banged up. This game is brutal. It's tough. And when somebody says something truthful, People go, oh, that's not a good leader. You know, a good leader should lie. And that's exactly what you're saying. A good leader should lie. That's not, that's not right. Tell the truth. And the truth is, I don't know. I could, I, could, I could get wiped out in the next play or the next week. Because what happened in that game with six sacks and the hits that he took, what was it, like 15 hits? The same thing happened in New York. It could be all over, Chet. So you could take your leadership and shove it because it doesn't work. The following was a paid political announcement. No, I'm just telling you. For citizens for a phone. <laughs> Think about it. Think about what you just said. I mean, I, you, you can't yeah, do you that. You have to lie as a quarterback. No, you don't. Yes, you no, do. You don't. No, you don't. People understand. People, you know what, you think people are stupid? 
You think people are going to say, hey, boy, look, boy, he's got a lot of guts. He's up there saying, hey, I'm going to finish up the season. That's not truthful. What truthful meant was, I don't know. I don't know if I can take these hits for the next so, so, so many, or next three weeks or five weeks or six weeks. That to me is important. That to me is telling. That's part of leadership. When you're, you know, exactly, you want the guy to say something, you want him to be something that he's not. Why would you want to be somebody out there calling him a leader when all of a sudden, you know, he, he can't do that. He can't play six games or seven games or eight games being hurt. See, I'm a Jay Cutler fan, all right? And I know, and I, I went through this at, at that game in Green Bay. When he came out of that game, I saw it all over. The Twitters, the Twinkers, the whatever they want to call it. And the fact is, you've got guys, you know, they're, they're all saying, Maurice Jones drew, oh, this kid, what? He has no heart. You know, and I see, I see the kid, what's his name, the cornerback uh, uh, from Dallas that does NFL football, uh, the Hall of Famer. Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders. Yeah, he left it. He don't get no heart. How could you say something so stupid? Is something like that? They're because, so irresponsible. But this wouldn't have left, and you wouldn't have left. You, it's an out-and-out out lie. Because let me tell you something: when a part of your body does not work, you leave. You can hurt a shoulder, you can hurt a knee, you can sprain it, you can hurt a, a little thing here and there. You play with pain. If you play with something that doesn't work, Chet, it doesn't work. His knee didn't work. And not on top of that, the Chicago Bears don't even use a shotgun where they can prop his ass up back there and let him throw the football. They don't use that shotgun. So that means he had a drop, step, throw. He couldn't do that. The knee was wobbly. The knee was shot. It was going like this. And you can't throw. And so that's why all these guys that jumped on, they were irresponsible with that statement. You say, well, the kid don't have guts. That kid took a beating in Vanderbilt. I watched a lot of those games. He took a beating with the Chicago Bears and got back up. He took a beating last week. This has nothing to do with that. And for somebody to come on and say, well, I don't, uh, I doubt his leadership. No, he's not the guy that's going to be out there maybe in raw, raw, maybe he's not a Marino. But the fact is that you got a Mercedes. I think the kid's a Mercedes, right? I think he's a Mercedes, a quarterback. Yeah. They put four flat tires on him. <laughs> that's what they did. They took a Mercedes, they put four ball tires on the guy, and now they expect him to be out there like a Brady. Watch Brady when he's, when he's playing. Sits back there, looks around, has a cigarette, has a little sandwich. Oh, the walker's open, I'll throw a hit. You don't have that luxury. And so that's why you have to start doing certain things. And that's why the game itself makes a difference in who's playing with you, who's playing in front of you, who's making plays for you, who's making the catches as the wide receivers. They run that corner pattern. That corner pattern, our Smurfs are not going to catch that damn ball. They're not tall enough. So why would you even throw it? They can't turn around and jump up and grab it. They can't do it. So, I mean, there's a lot of things here. And I get real uh, kind of antsy about Cutler when he starts saying things about it.